In this video, we're going to look at some advantages of a digital system over an analog system. So if you recall, we defined an analog system as, as a continuous, time-varying, direct function of the information that it represented. A digital system, on the other hand, was a discrete representation of the information that was being represented. And so the reason that this was different is because in an analog system, <coughs> the output being produced, so let's say that this is an analog system and this is going to be a digital system, the output that's being produced is a direct mapping to the input. Okay, so it's continuous and time bearing. That means the analog system is always on. It's always producing an output that's a direct mapping to the input. In a digital system, on the other hand, what you have is you have a discrete representation of the information. So for example, if we were going to take a look at this information that was coming in and we were going to look every once in a while at a rate that kind of looked like that, what we produce then is a series of pieces of information that might be able to be used later in order to represent what was going on. If we encoded these, so for example if we had that sort of representation we could come along later and we could reconstruct what was happening. But they were discrete in that we only recorded information at a particular rate. You could call it a sample rate. And this was a big advantage because the digital system didn't have to be on at all times. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second of why that becomes important. If we encoded this and we encoded it in a binary system, what we could do is we could represent this in a two-valued state, and if we tried to map that to a number system, we could potentially encode these as zeros and ones. So for example, instead of actually having what, or instead of looking at what this information might be on a graph, we might just take a list of a code that it might be encoded in in binary. So for example, let's say that this was something like 011, and this became 101, and this became 110, and this became 011. You could have this set of discrete codes that represented the information that was being observed by the digital system. Okay, so we also talked about a little bit about the signaling that we use to produce a digital signal, and you know, we, when we produce when we produce a signal to represent digital information, it is an electrical signal, so we typically use voltage to represent it. And since we only want to be in one of two states to use binary to encode this, which is the simplest form to encode something, what we do is we define these regions where when the signal is above it, it will be a 1. So if our signal came along, our signal was coming along and it went like this and then it came down like this, we could say that when it's above this region right here, this switching region, it's going to be considered a 1. When it's below that switching region, it's, it's considered a 0. So this is kind of the simplest encoding technique that we have and that's encoding information in binary and we do that by defining this threshold, this switching threshold. <clears throat> okay, so why is that important? If you think about comparing that to an analog signal that is also varying with time and even if it is a, a, a voltage and we had that original signal on here <clears throat> well think about it like this if this this is the output and <clears throat> this is an analog output and then this is our digital output right here one of the thing one of the first main advantages of digital signaling is its immunity to noise so in all electrical systems we're going to have noise noise is caused by a variety of, of sources it can be caused by thermal noise it can be caused by electromagnetic noise it can be caused by uh, coupled noise from other sources there's a there's a whole host of reasons that noise exists in a system and you can very rarely get rid of it so if you think about what noise is it tends to be kind of a random a s random signal that's superimposed upon your original system or your original signal so let's take a look at let's say for an example let's say for example that i had noise that was being inserted on my original signal uh, in an analog system. Well, what that's going to do is since the analog system is a direct mapping or a direct function of that, that noise is just going to be simply carried directly through to the output. And what you're going to see is this sort of information. Now, if you need that information, that real information to represent what you're trying to get, then this becomes an issue. So this is this distortion truly is put on the output of the system. And when you go to recover the original information, 
then the original information is contaminated. Uh, one of the more, most common examples of this is uh, noise on like an FM radio or AM or FM radio. So there's noise that's produced, this noise that's coupled onto the original signal, and it comes through the speakers as a distorted as distorted sound. So you hear the the music isn't as clear, and that's that's an example of analog noise being put onto that signal. So the the noise could have been put onto that electrical signal at in a variety of steps. It could have been put at, on the sound uh, or the electrical signal at the radio station before it was transmitted over the air. It could have been inserted uh, onto the signal in the air. It could have been inserted on the signal in your radio itself. But the problem is that as soon as that noise got on the signal, no matter where it was, once it went through the speakers and we basically recovered the original signal, then that noise was also recovered and converted into the ultimate output, which was sound. So this is a problem because then our sound was distorted. In a digital system, let's look at if we took that same amount of noise and we put it onto a digital system. So what's going to happen is we have this noise that's coming in on this information, and we have this noise that is put on the system. But look what happens when I start thinking about when I decode this. So all I get when I get to the receiver is I look at this and I compare that original signal, so this is a signal right here, and I say was that was that signal above or below this switching threshold? In this situation the answer is either yes or no. It doesn't matter whether it was really far below the switching threshold or it was just barely below the switching threshold. The answer was that the signal was below the switching threshold, so this was indeed a zero. So you can see that you can decode the digital information or the, the original digital code much easier than in an analog system because you're immune to this noise. Now as long as the noise is small enough that it doesn't cause the signal to jump, you know, jump directly into the switching threshold, then you're fine. You'll be able to recover this. But that's one of the, the first advantages of digital signaling, and that is noise immunity. So that's a, that's a big one. Okay. Another advantage of a digital system is in the simplicity of the circuitry. If you think about a digital system or a digital circuit, all it's really going to be doing is determining whether something is a 1 or a 0. So you're going to have some, some circuit and its output's either going to be a 1 or a 0. Well, Whenever you have two states, you have this notion of on and off. Okay. So as soon as you sit, you simplify something down to just being on or off, it doesn't matter whether it's really on or really off, it's just on or off. You can start encoding and transmitting digital information using a variety of techniques. A very simple one would be a light source. So imagine that you were trying to transmit information to somebody by turning on and off the lights. So when the light was on, that's a, that's a 1, and when it's off, it's a 0. That's a very easy way to encode and transmit information and it didn't really matter if the light wasn't on very brightly or if it was super bright the receiver know, knew that that was actually an on and it was a one so that's an example of <clears throat> the simplicity that we could do an analog system that used light for example would have to actually dim the light accordingly and it would and the receiver would have to pick that up and interpret what a certain you know a certain brightness of light actually meant, whereas in a digital system it's just on or off. So that's a, that's a, a classic example of using light to transmit digital information, and that's actually how optical communications work. You transmit light down an optical fiber, and it's either there or it isn't, representing a one or one or a zero. Another, if you go back to the light analogy, the way that we turned on and off the information was with this real simple notion of a switch. So we had a switch that was that could turn on and off the the device. Well, it turns out as soon as you just make something that's a switch, it's very simple to implement that. It can be implemented with an electromechanical switch. It can be implemented with like a vacuum tube. It can be implemented with the our most common circuit today, which is a transistor. So what you can do with a transistor is you can turn things on or off, and in, when you turn things on or off, the thing that you're turning on or off is an electrical quantity. So, for example, all we'd need to do inside of this digital circuit to produce a 1 might be to take a switch and take the output and tie it up to some voltage, which represented a 1. So let's say that this voltage right here corresponded to 
a voltage that was over here and let's just say it was let's say it was one volt so if I had a one volt up here and I connected the output to that so I closed the switch and connected it to a one then the output would be a one volt and that would be indeed a, an output of a one if we then said okay this voltage over here might be let's let's call that zero volts then what we could have is if we had another switch that acted in a complementary manner and it tied it down to a zero volts if this one then opened up and this one then closed we would then take the output and force it to zero volts which is producing a zero so this is how modern electronics that implement digital systems work they have a set of complementary switches in there in the form of transistors that actually produce the ones and zeros the second main advantage of a digital system is the circuit simplicity if you think about it you're going to be turning on and off switches and you're going to be turning them on and off at discrete time intervals. So you're not turning them on and off all the time. You are actually just turning them on and off whenever you want to produce an output. So that gives you the discrete behavior of a digital system. Think about an analog system. An analog system has to work at all times. One of the problems with that is that it's an electrical system so it needs a power supply. So it needs a power supply. And anytime you get variation on the power supply, it's going to influence what the signal might look like. If the power supply comes down, then maybe Maybe the signal is going to come down. So you have to actually put circuitry inside of the analog, analog system in order to compensate for things like power supply variation. In addition, you might have things like temperature that influence what the output might look like. If your circuit is sensitive to temper, temperature, you might have a drop in temperature which will result in a drop in the output signal. You have to then put circuitry inside of the analog system which will compensate for temperature variation. You also might have variation between different analog systems. So let's say you tried to build two analog systems that were identical to each other but this one was fabricated slightly different than this system. You might have variations between the way these circuits work. So you might have to put additional circuitry into the analog system to compensate for for fabrication variations. So analog systems, they tend to be much more complex in terms of the circuit design and the circuit implementation versus a digital circuit, which is simply a set of switches that can overcome a lot of the, a lot of the uh, obstacles that exist in building a real world system. Okay, the final thing that is there's a lot of advantages of digital, but we'll just talk about three right now. One of the one of the third big advantage of a digital system is in the low power nature of it. So if you think about, you know, just first off, if you think about a set of switches, the power it takes to open and close these switches is much smaller than the power it takes to continuously amplify or attenuate an incoming signal as in an analog system. So that's one of the big advantages of it, or that's one of the first advantages in terms of power that you have in a digital system is that it just doesn't take much energy to open and close a switch because you're doing a very simple thing. You're just opening and shutting a switch. The second main advantage of that is think about when you when you open and shut that switch. You're only opening and shutting it at discrete intervals. So that means all the time in between these you're not consuming power so you're not consuming power the majority of the time that the system is in operation you only consume it when you actually tell the switches to open and close that's not the case in an analog system because in an analog system you're continuous no matter what you are always producing an output and that output has to be compensated for power supply variation temperature variation and fabrication variation but it never stops so you're continuously consuming power so that's why we're able to build such large digital systems today is because we use transistors which don't consume a lot of power and we only consume power in those transistors when we actually tell the the circuit to switch so we have another big advantage so we have this low power so we're able to add more and more transistors to get more and more sophisticated systems uh, a final one is we'll, we'll look at one more uh, a final reason that digital systems are so or have such an advantage today is that when you build something like a switch it's very simple Okay, so we talked about it's just a simple on or off. Well, that allows us to get very small circuit implementations. So since we're only building a transistor that will operate as an on or an off, we're able to make that smaller and smaller and smaller. And so over the past you know, 40 or 50 years, as the transistors have been continually being fabricated, each time with a new type of transistor, it's smaller than the one before it. So that's allowing us to 
put more and more transistors on an integrated circuit and form even more complex digital systems. So those are some of the advantages of a, of a digital system over an analog system and those are some of the reasons that digital systems to now are replacing analog systems in a variety of uh, applications. Okay, let's stop right there.